once we've imported our data to Google Sheets and once we've deleted all those extra columns that we don't really need, it's time to plot a graph so that we can get the velocity of that toy car. Now, I, as I was walking around yesterday and you were completing that graph, I noticed most or all groups had data that was taken either before and or after the car was moving at a constant velocity. In other words, irrelevant data data that was kind of scattered all over the place because maybe you started it a little bit too soon or ended it a little bit too late. That's normal. If you got that, that's normal. We have to figure out a way to delete the data that we don't want though. So what I'm going to do right now is plot a graph with all of the data. Good data, bad data, otherwise. Let's highlight all of this data. Literally just clicking and highlighting everything that you see there. As far as it goes, and you guys seem to go a long ways with your daddy yesterday. Holy cow, did you ever. Okay, it looks like they ran their looks like they ran the experiment for 13.9 seconds. That's okay. We're gonna find a bunch of data that's not relevant there, but we'll see that when we plot that graph. So we've got that data highlighted. Notice when I highlight that data that I have not highlighted the headings. Now I'm going to click on Insert, Chart. This is what's going to give me my graph. Now it's going to give me a bunch of options for graphs here, including bar graphs and line graphs and so on. This is a scatter plot. Now because you have so many data points, they're so close together that you don't actually see the dots. That looks like a line. What that actually is is a bunch of dots indicating data points. Okay? If you don't have as many data points, you would actually see those dots as opposed to it looking like a line. Click on that one. Click on the one that has dots. Click insert. Now, when that graph is inserted, you can see clearly here that some of this data is irrelevant right here. That was taken before the car was actually moving. And then some of this data over here is irrelevant. It was taken maybe after the motion sensor lost sight of the car. We want to delete that data. So it looks like from about zero to maybe three-ish, seconds is irrelevant. Let's delete zero to three seconds. Literally, just highlight that data from zero up to three seconds. If it's not exact, if you got a 2.95, whatever, that's okay. Just delete somewhere around that. Now let's scroll over and it looks like that's good. From zero to three seconds, looks like it's good. Now let's delete from maybe about 12 seconds forward. So let's go past 12 seconds, scroll down, oh, looks like I got 11.9, good enough, right? It doesn't matter if it's exactly here. Let's delete all that data past 11.9 seconds. Let's go back to our graph now. Looks like we got a good straight line graph, right? You still have an unbelievable number of data points in there, which means that your line is going to appear to be a line graph, even though it's really a bunch of points that are just kind of jumbled together. That's okay. They're a straight line. That's what we want. So far, so good? Now you got to do something with it. First thing you want to do is probably label your graph, label the title of the graph. So click on it, and then click on the top right-hand corner, click Advanced Edit. There's going to be an option right away here to title the chart. You're going to title that whatever your y-axis is versus your x-axis. In other words, the second column of your table jack versus the first column of the table. That's going to be position versus time. And that should appear in just a moment. Position versus time. There you go. There's my title. Now I'm going to scroll down a little ways further to where it says axis in red. Notice this is axis horizontal. Let's label your horizontal axis, which is going to be time in seconds. Now let's change the horizontal axis to the vertical axis and label the vertical axis position in meters. Now it's looking good. But I still need a line of best fit. To create a line of best fit, we're going to scroll down further and click on trend line where it says none you want to add a linear trend line now it's pretty difficult to see that trend line because of all the points jumbled together maybe I want to change the color of that trend line 
Let's make it red to make it a little bit more visible. Let's make it a little bit thicker. Let's make it a little less see-through and a little brighter. It's still difficult to see the line as it goes through the data points because the data points go over top of the line. But that's a good thing in a sense because if, if the data points are so good and so straight that they literally hide the line, then it means my data is really, really good. Does that make sense? All right. The last thing that I need to do is display, to display the slope of that graph. Scroll down a little bit further here to where it says label. By default, it's going to say custom label. That's not what you want. You don't want this custom label that says trend line for data series one. You want to label the equation. The equation, if we click update here now, is going to tell us what the slope of this graph is. The equation for the graph is y is equal to 0.323x subtract 0.671. What does that mean? The slope of the graph is 0.323. So Jack's conclusion would be the following. The velocity of the toy car was 0 0.323 meters per second. This is known because the slope of a position time graph was 0 0.323. Does that make sense? All right. Now, I'm going to tidy this up a little bit because I want to copy this into my document that I'm going to hand in. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete a whole bunch of empty rows, highlight all those empty rows. Literally, if you're using a PC, right click. If you're using a Mac or a Chromebook, two finger click, right? Two finger click on the, on the touchpad. Right click it, delete those rows. Now I'm probably going to want to, you got a whole bunch of these, Jack, but probably going to want to delete all of these empty rows as well. The reason I want to delete those rows, and I'm not going to delete all those for you, Jack. You can go back and delete the rest of them, but I'll just start. Again, highlight the row, right-click or double-tap for a Mac or a Chromebook, delete row, and so on. The reason I want to delete those rows is because you got so much data. It's going to take up a lot of space in that document to begin with. If I have it double-spaced and have empty rows, then it's going to take up twice as much space. You're going to be scrolling through pages and pages and pages of a document just to look at data. You guys see what I'm doing there? I'm not going to finish that process because Jack's going to do that when he goes to hand this in. Now, I'm going to go back to my lab and click Create. This time I'm going to create a document because this, this is what Jack's going to hand in, is this document. In just a moment, that document will appear. again. Now that the document has appeared, we're going to click on that document. It's going to take us into a blank document that looks like a Word document. It's not Microsoft Word, but it acts very much like Microsoft Word, just like Google Sheets acts very much like Microsoft Excel. Now, Jack's going to type his problem. He's going to type his data and so on. Okay, And then he's probably going to go back to his spreadsheet and copy over some stuff to avoid having to literally type in all of those data points. That's a lot of typing if you got to type in those data points. What Jack's going to do at this point is highlight all of his data. I'm only highlighting a little bit, right? Highlighting all of his data, and then go Control-C. Control-C copies that. Let's go into Data, and go Control-V. Now it's going to paste it. Notice. Some of those empty spots are deleted, but then Jack's still going to delete some of those empty spots. Right? Then we go to analysis. And he's going to, for analysis, click on the graph, control C again, go back into his document, control V. And that graph is going to appear momentarily. Because it's too big, it actually appears on the next page, but you can work on spacing and formatting and that sort of thing. Then what comes next? Conclusion and sources of error. Again, the conclusion is based on this number, 0 0.323. And then, of course, your sources of error are based on materials, procedure, um, time management, and so on and so on. 